Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our services on this rainy Sunday here in June as we begin our season after Pentecost with Trinity Sunday. We thank everyone for joining us, and our service begins with our opening territorial acknowledgement. My friends, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, the Haudenosaunee and Nishibek nations, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. We gather by these territorial lands and waters to worship, listen, learn, share, and heal together in the name of our Creator, the Holy One of Blessing. As we gather today, we have a few announcements to begin our service with, and we wanted to welcome to our midst our visiting guest preacher for this Sunday, the Reverend Canon Mark Kingan, our former incumbent is here with us, and also hiding in the pews is his beloved wife, Beth. So Beth, welcome back to St. Mary's, and uh, Canon Mark is at the back getting ready to walk in with the choir, so Mark, welcome home to St. Mary's. Thank you for being with us for the 150th events this month. Ali, could you put up the next slide for us? We also wanted to remind everybody that our big summer garden party for St. Mary's is happening the last Saturday of June. So June the 25th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. With all this rain, these gardens are going to be gorgeous here. So uh, please join us at uh, 2 o'clock on the 25th. Uh, Mayor David West and uh, Catherine Leckie, the wife of the late Reverend Canon Bob Leckie, will be here to uh, share some memories and also uh, the mayor will present a certificate of congratulations from the city. So mark your calendars, join us as you can. We'd love to see you the last Saturday of the month. We wanted to let people know that next Sunday on Father's Day, we will be dedicating a tree in the gardens in memory of the late Jack Walker. Jack passed away in December of 2020 from COVID and was a beloved fixture in our church family. And we wanted to do something to uh, honor Jack's uh, gracious, faithful, and loving spirit. And we have a Japanese lilac tree that has been planted in the gardens. And next Sunday after the Father's Day service, uh, we'll be dedicating and blessing that tree in memory of Jack. So we understand at present that Jack's son, Colin, will be with us for that Sunday, and we look forward to this opportunity next week. Ali, if you could put up the next slide. We also wanted to share that next Sunday, there will be a family memorial service for the daughter of Phoebe Williams. Phoebe's daughter, Natalie, passed away a year ago, and uh, we will be gathering with the Williams family as they have a, a public memorial and celebration of Natalie's life. So Phoebe, our thoughts and prayers with you as we look forward to that celebration next weekend. We wanted to remind people that our Bible study program continues on Wednesday with our studies for the Sunday readings. We meet in the church boardroom at 1.30 on Wednesday afternoons. Please join us as you're able. And what's our last word here? We just wanted to say that today is the final Sunday for our choir to be formally in residence, and uh, next week they will be uh, incognito, uh, maybe up in the loft or in the pews amongst you, but we just wanted to say a word of thanks to the St. Mary's Choir for returning uh, so bravely and so boldly after uh, the church reopened and uh, returning to their uh, place aloft, and we just want to thank them for all their work, and uh, we look forward to another choir anthem this morning. Uh, during Mark's visit. You may end up having a little bit of a thirsty spot after the service, and we wanted to remind you that uh, Cafe Rose is open after the service, so uh, coffee hour is happening every week after church, and uh, uh, we thank our hostess and coffee leader, Rose, for organizing things. Join us after as you're able. 
We wanted to also just welcome a new little person to our midst. You may hear him during the service. Uh, little Oliver is home with his family now and had been enduring some uh, treatments at uh, sick kids and is in a much, much stronger and healthier place. So uh, mom and big sister are watching over him this weekend. And so uh, we welcome Oliver and uh, encourage him to stretch his lungs. So uh, maybe he's trying out for the choir. You never know. But uh, we welcome him to our midst today. We have a few birthdays to share and acknowledge in our midst as we gather this week. We wanted to wish a happy 90th to Owen Pegg, who's watching in Peterborough. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Owen, and happy 90th. Uh, Owen's birthday will be at the end of this week, I believe on Friday, so uh, 90 years. Well done, sir. Tip of the hat, and uh, congratulations to Owen. Are there any birthdays in our midst that we need to acknowledge? When's Rosie's birthday, Kate? Is it this weekend coming up, or is it in a little bit? Just passed. Okay, well, Rosie, I don't know if we were able to sing to you happy birthday. Rosie, can you stand up and tell us how old you turned? Was it 10? 10. Happy 10th birthday. How about a hand for Rosie? Turning 10. I'm sure there's other 10-year-olds in our midst here today, but are there any other birthday individuals that are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary in our midst? Okay, well, we'll sing happy birthday to Rosie and to Owen, who's watching along at home. Let's join and sing together. Happy birthday. As we transition into worship, we have our opening video reflection, but on behalf of the wardens, we just wanted to remind folks about the current COVID protocols at St. Mary's. We've transitioned out of our mask mandate, so any folks that would like to take off their masks, please feel free to do so. However, if there's those who have conditions within their households or families that may wish uh, to remain masked, please feel free to choose whichever option is most comfortable for you. At the time of communion, the X along the front of the communion rail marks seven feet between yourself and the next party. Please feel free to uh, stand on those indicators and you'll be able to socially distance. And at this time, we're not physically sharing the peace outside of our own households, so hug the one you're in the car with. If it's someone else, give them a nod or a wave. My friends, we now sit back on this Trinity Sunday and enjoy our video reflection that you will probably know the tune and the words to. But as we begin our worship this day, please sit back and let us center our hearts and minds on God. I invite the congregation to stand as we continue our service with our opening hymn. Our hymn is in the blue hymn book number one, and the words are also on the screen. We now stand together and sing hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy tea. Let's begin.
Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ the word made flesh through your Holy Spirit you give us a share in your life and love we ask that you fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you Father Son and Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen I invite the congregation to be seated as we continue with our kids talk for today before we send you guys off to Sunday school. So guys, today is Trinity Sunday. Ali, can you put up the next slide for us? And this is a day where we remember a little bit and focus a little bit on the teachings about who God is. And so today I wanna to use something special to teach you guys about the Holy Spirit. So guys, what's this? It's a, what is it, Dougal? A camera. And do you guys know that Canon Mark is a photographer and he loves to take pictures and he does a lot of artwork and beautiful things with cameras. And so because Canon Mark is here, I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit about this camera and use it to show you something about God. When Jesus was alive, they said that there's one God. But as Jesus taught us and Jesus showed us God's heart through his power and through his love, and as Jesus told us that there was going to be something coming after he left that would put that love inside of us, the church didn't really know how to explain God anymore. And so they tried to develop a little understanding that God is one, but that God has three persons. So guys, who's the person that takes the picture and uses the camera? That would be the photographer, right? They create the image and they choose it. But inside this camera, as Ali has shown you, there is a little something that takes that message to other people and takes that image and shares it with others. There's a little thing here that shares and shows and reveals what was taken a picture of. And then also inside, ugh, I'm gonna shake it, there you go. There is some energy that allows the whole thing to work. And when Jesus was with his friends, he was trying to say, God's more than just one. If you want to understand God, God is this great creator and image taker and maker. But God also takes that image into the world and shows it and shares it with others. And to make sure that that image can get shared and captured and work, there's power in it. So God is a creator. God is a sharer of things, and God is power. 
So just like how this camera has three parts, but it's one camera, this is how we understand the big picture of God. In Jesus, we get to be shown the image of who God is and how much God loves us and how important we are. But also we get this gift of the Spirit that's like a power that can come into us to give us power to do amazing things. So as you guys head off to Sunday school and as we think more about God, remember that that image, that power, and that creating is all stuff that you guys can do because God gives us all the same gifts he's given to Jesus. So I'll send you guys off and uh, hope you guys have a great service and we'll see you in a little bit. My friends, our service is now going to continue with our reading from God's Word, and I invite our first reader to come forward as we have our opening passage from the Old Testament. reading from Proverbs. Hear how wisdom calls and understanding lifts her voice. She takes her stand at the crossroads by the wayside, at the top of the hill beside the gate, at the entrance to the city, at the approach by the portals. She cries aloud, it is to you I call and my voice is to the sons of men. The Lord created me the first of his works long ago, before all else that he made. I was formed in earliest times at the beginning, before earth itself. I was born when there was yet no ocean, when there were no springs brimming with water, before the mountains were settled in their place, before the hills, I was born. When as yet he had made neither land nor streams, nor the mass of the earth's soil. When he set the heavens in place, I was there. When he girdled the ocean with the horizon, when he fixed the canopy of clouds overhead, and confine the springs of the deep, when he prescribed limits for the sea so that the waters do not transgress his command, when he made earth's foundations firm. Then I was at his side each day, playing in his presence continually, playing in his whole world, while my delight was in mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service now continues with our psalm appointed for today. I invite the congregation to join with our psalm leader as we continue with Psalm 8. Psalm 8. O Lord our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Concluding prayer. Blessed are you, creator of heaven and earth. Amid the immensity of the universe, you are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for the gift of your Son, who humbled himself to share our life, that we might be raised with him to glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
I invite the congregation to stand as we sing our gospel hymn. We now stand and sing a round of hallelujah. with you and also with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to saint john glory to you lord jesus christ jesus said i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, we have listened to your word to us in Scripture this day. Help us as we reflect on all we have heard, and especially as we mark this milestone of 150 years of faithful ministry here at St. Mary's. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. First, a word of thank you for the invitation to be here today. Beth and I are so pleased uh, that we could join in marking this milestone. In this place, which was a formative place for us in our lives, and especially in the lives of our children, Nathaniel and Patrick, who grew up here in Richmond Hill and here at St. Mary's. We'll have time to chat after more, but uh, Patrick has just turned 25 and is graduating with his master's in public history. And Nathaniel is 29 and has graduated in uh, drama and uh, English and is working as an actor in places where he can find work. And so we bring their, you uh, their greetings today as well as they remember this place so fondly from their time here. Second, I was thinking, I can't believe it's been nine years since we left St. Mary's. Nine years. And we've both come a long way since that in terms of the things that have happened in your life and in my life, in your ministry and in my ministry. And may I say, as I look out at each of you, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> with the exception of two people that I would have never recognized, Ella and Quinn. My <laughs> times have changed. I'm aware of and conscious of those who were integral in my time of ministry here who have died over the past eight years. Rick Sulker, Trevor Kimpton, Ruth Wilton, Pauline Lashley, Jack Walker, Gwen Halliday, Jim Orser, and undoubtedly others that I may not have heard about. 
May they rest in peace and rise in eternal glory. And I remember those that I've had the pleasure of working with when I was here as incumbent of St. Mary's. Associates, curates, students, staff, and wardens, some of you who are here today. I think of Sheila Ashworth. Again, may she rest in God's eternal peace. Ruth Ann Ward, who is now a neighbor of mine in Port Perry. Joanne Billinger, Julie Meekin, Kevin Wong, Karen Hatch, Dan Graves, Michael Barton, Susan Rogers, Murray Bear, uh, John Martin, Wendy Lywood, and if I've missed anyone, I'm sorry, I'll just call it a senior's moment. <laughs> I've also been asked to bring greetings to your music director. For those of you who don't know, she used to be the music director at St. Paul's Uxbridge, where I am now. They miss you. But well done to St. Mary's. In addition to celebrating 150 years of faithful ministries, which I'll talk about in a minute, today in our liturgical year is also Trinity Sunday. Now, Matthew, well played. Well played. Because I know and have done what you did today. Ask the guest or associate to preach on Trinity Sunday. Because it's usually not a favorite to reflect on. And even though you may find it hard to believe, because clergy always have something to say, um, clergy, when it comes to the doctrine of the Trinity, are often at a loss for words. Yet I would be remiss if I didn't say something about this feast day. Our faith in the Trinity, God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one and one in three. There's no doubt the Trinity is complex as we try in the only way we can as human beings to describe the very nature of God and to define who God is and how God relates to us and how God relates to all of God's creation. I really appreciate that first reading from Proverbs. God saying that wisdom is calling out, that wisdom is crying out so that God's people can recognize the very presence of God. God is referring to the Holy Spirit there, who we are told as the passage goes on was present at the very beginning of creation, was active and involved in all that has come to be. Wisdom, or the Holy Spirit, was there when the oceans were created, and the sky, and the mountains, and the clouds, in the company of the Creator, as one with the Creator, feeling joy and delight with the world of things that were created and all of the creatures too, and happily celebrating the human family that God created. And that gift and presence of wisdom wasn't time limited, wasn't only at the beginning of creation, but rather as a gift that is timeless, including to this very day. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus tells his disciples they're present with him, that on this very day, including you and me, that even as he leaves this earth and is no longer physically present, he will never leave his followers abandoned, orphaned, alone, to deal with all that was to come. Jesus promised them a friend, an advocate, a teacher, who would continue to impart wisdom and lead those who would continue to be called into ministries of discipleship, even to this very day. Jesus, although not specifically naming what we know as the Trinity, brings the three together as one, saying that he and the Father are intimately linked and connected to each other, and that they, along with the Spirit, are one, even as we experience them separately and distinctly. That's a message we need to hear today and affirm today and internalize in how we know God and how we build a relationship by engaging in the myriad of ways that God is known to us. 
So the question out of both our readings for today is that wisdom is still speaking. The Holy Spirit is still guiding and teaching God's people about faithfulness. But I wonder, are we listening? That's a good question, especially as you mark this anniversary, 150 years of ministry in Richmond Hill. For 150 years, those who have gone before you have been open to the guiding of the Holy Spirit. As ministry began here in 1872 and has continued now into the 21st century. Through the building of this space in 1960s or 70s. Undoubtedly, there were times, likely even when they built this place, when it may have felt a bit confusing, when what the Spirit was asking wasn't what the gathered community wanted. And yet, for 150 years, this parish has tried to be faithful and to listen and to discern God's will for them and God's presence in this community, proclaiming the gospel of God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. That has at times involved taking risks. It has meant being bold and courageous, but always following in the direction and wisdom of God's Spirit that is here and engaged in all that is going on. I had the pleasure of serving here at Incumbent of St. Mary's from 2001 to 2013 and have many fond memories of working together, seeking a vision of what God was up to and where God was calling us to go in our ministry to each other, and even more importantly, in our ministry to the wider community around us. I remember sharing our space with the Orthodox Church, which built ties and relationships that went beyond the rent that was received a relationship that grew into something significant as we worshiped, not at the same time, not even necessarily in the same space, but within the same context. Outreach was always significant, sponsoring refugees, and especially when we were there for the startup of the Out of the Cold Ministry here in our community of Richmond Hill. That was particularly significant because that wasn't just a parish initiative. It involved other churches and other faith communities and people of no faith at all, many from the community at large, coming together and meeting a need for these folks who needed a place to sleep and a warm meal to eat. That ministry of hospitality was for me a very significant moment in the time that we spent together when I truly felt the wisdom of God at work, the Holy Spirit nudging us on, maybe more than nudging, hitting us over the head, <coughs> excuse me, saying, I've got something I need you to do, something I want you to do, inviting us into an opportunity for us to live out our baptismal identity, what we say we are, who we say we are, by being faithful to that as disciples of Jesus Christ. And then, of course, my comments for today wouldn't be complete without the highlight of my time at St. Mary's. The years of our vibrant youth ministries, Hang Time and TGIF, led first by Michael Barton and then taken on by Jeff Potter and T. T Daw. The antics they got up to some of which I don't know about, and some of which were probably better that I didn't know about. I remember once being told after the fact about the toilet races in the parking lot and thinking if our insurance people only knew. Games that they played together. The lock-ins on Monday, Thursday, and Halloween. And, but there was always a faith component helping our young people who gathered together to build relationships, to build community, and to grow in their faith as followers of Jesus Christ. 
To this day, Patrick still talks about the Monday Thursday lock-ins and being here in this space in the dark. And he would literally sign up for two or three vigil times. That's just who he was. And that's how he grew in his faith through those kinds of settings. I remember when he graduated from hang time to TGIF, he was so excited, I get to go to a lock-in. And he truly did enjoy them and still remembers them to this day. And there was the vibrant worship life that I inherited, the tradition of music that was always so integral. I remember especially Christmas Eve services, uh, the glorious um, caroling and anthems of the choir as we would begin, and then, and then that grand organ fanfare leading us into a festive procession as joy filled our celebration of the Incarnation. I think about the active lay involvement whether that it was as subdeacons or readers or chalice bearers or intercessors or anointers or side people or choir, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some, and if so, I apologize. There was the willingness to try different things, whether it be a new communion setting, or maybe it was a contemporary hymn, or those interactive sermons when Bible study came to church. And finally, in the years just before I left, we entered into the Diocesan Missional Transformation Initiative through the diocese and the congregational development. We were intentionally about engaging with our community beyond these walls, out there on Young Street, out there on Major Mackenzie. We were intentionally asking, what is our mission? What is our ministry? What is the vision of what God is calling us to? And that involved asking that wonderful question that I still used. What was God up to already in the community? Not what were we going to bring to the community, but what was God already doing out there? What would we find when we went and met and built relationships with people? And how might we join in with what God was up to and make that part of our ministry, our presence? as we were active, visible, recognized, and engaged in our community, as we built relationships. And isn't that the essence of the gospel? In truth, we all know that there were times when things weren't always easy, when there wasn't always agreement in what we should be doing or how we should be doing it. But I think it's healthy to remember them as part of the parish's story because they are times when undoubtedly we learned something about grace and forgiveness and healing and reconciliation. And ultimately, we were strengthened in the bond of ministry that we shared together. But even in those times, which may have led to some feeling stress, God was still at work. The Spirit was still active. And even then, there were things to learn about our faith and about what it means to be community and what, what it means to witnessing as we are called to, united as the body of Christ. I believe anniversaries such as this one is, are significant. And they need to be marked. They need to be acknowledged. We need to remember the story of our past and those who have gone before us and those who have given us the legacy of what we have here today. And in that, we need to especially be aware of the faith that has grown in this place and that has been lived out faithfully over the past 150 years. However, there's another reason to celebrate these milestone anniversaries, and that's the future, where this place is headed, what it will be like here at St. Mary's when the parish gathers to celebrate 175 years and eventually 200 years. It's good to look at the past, to take stock of the blessings received over the years and the experience that's been shared. But we must also look to the future too, beyond today, beyond this anniversary, into what is God calling this parish into next? in the years, the decades, yet to come. And I have no doubt that God has something amazing, some amazing opportunities ahead for St. Mary's. 
many of which you can't even imagine at this moment. And some of those opportunities may well be challenging, especially in the culture and times in which we are living and ministering as the church. It's not easy times to be the church of Jesus Christ in the world we live in today. But remember something. Remember our response in our baptismal covenant when we are asked to make our commitment to faithfulness. What do we say? We will with God's help. With God's help. Even though we sometimes forget, we don't ever have to face the future and what that future holds all on our own. And heaven knows we can't. Thankfully, God is here with us. God is engaged with us in all that we're doing. God will guide us. God will direct us. God will help us discern so that we can know the will of God and the desire of God for us and for the ministries of this place. So as those who came before us listened for the leading of the Holy Spirit, as they listened for the wisdom of God in all that they built here, in all the ministry that has been sustained and has grown over these 150 years, I encourage you, keep on listening. Keep on being attentive. Remain engaged. Because with God's help, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, this parish will continue to be vibrant, alive, present, visible, active, engaged, and recognized as an integral part of the fabric of this community of Richmond Hill, living, exercising the gospel ministry of good news proclaimed by Jesus Christ. My prayer in this milestone year of celebration, but even more so beyond in the years to come, is yes, that you'll remember the past and remember it fondly, but that you will continue to live faithfully in the present and that you will always have hope for the future. God has, God is, and God will bless you individually and collectively too as a parish family. So friends, in the spirit of this Trinity Sunday, always be aware of God, the creator who made you, and brought you into being. Always believe in God the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who is your salvation and the foundation of your faith. And always trust in God the Holy Spirit, who sustains you and who gives you life. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will never let you down, will never abandon you. And so in the name of our triune God, May you know God's truth. May you continue to live it out faithfully this day, throughout this anniversary year and always. Amen. Our service now continues with our musical offering today. I invite the congregation to remain seated as our choir offers their piece entitled, This Is My Father's World. Please sit back and enjoy.
congregation to find a comfortable posture of prayer. Sitting or kneeling, we continue now with our general prayers. And I invite our intercessor to come forward. God, as we gather this day, we have hold in our hearts all those we know to be in need of prayer and those known to you alone, O Lord. Especially at this time, we continue in our intercessions for the people of the Ukraine. We pray, Lord, that you may bring peace to that war, that you may protect those who are in harm's way, that you may move the hearts and minds of those in leadership around the world to seek after peace and to support all those in trouble. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon this parish as we celebrate our 150th anniversary this year. We give thanks for the ministries and for the work of Canon Mark and thank him for his presence here among us. We pray, Lord, that our time together today in prayer and in worship will strengthen us in our calling to be faithful to your Son and to follow in his ways. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. My friends, our service continues with our prayers of confession and absolution as we continue to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. I invite the congregation to join in with the bold print as we continue. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as we prepare to greet one another and share the peace. Would you stand, please? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We invite you to greet each other with a gesture of peace. Wave to those in your midst. Peace be with you all. My friends, our service will now continue with our offertory hymn as we take up our collection and prepare the altar for Holy Communion. Offerings can be placed in the offering bins, offering basins at the front of the church, or donations can be given online. Our service continues with hymn 334 as we sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of Holy God, we praise your name. We now sing together. in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Our service now continues with our Eucharistic prayer, and I invite the congregation to sit or kneel, or stand as may be your preference. I invite the congregation to join in with the bold print as we continue together.
Savior and Redeemer, He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread, and gave you thanks, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, Heavenly Father, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. My friends, as our service continues, we continue now with the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to join in as we say it now together. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. We now continue with our sentence for the breaking of the bread. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the choir prepares to come for Holy Communion at this time, we'll now offer our prayer of spiritual communion for those joining us virtually today. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Our service now continues with the administration of the choir for communion. After the choir has received the congregation, we come forward.
congregation to stand as we begin our closing prayers. Would you stand, please? Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we say our closing prayer of the doxology together. Together we say, Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. My friends, as our service closes, we would just like to remind everyone that at the end of our service today, we will have a slide repeat of the stained glass window package prepared by the 150th slide team of Sandra and Joan. So please feel free to stay and enjoy that during the closing postlude after the service. Uh, Ken and Mark and Beth will not be greeting you at the door. They will be heading directly up to coffee hour so that we don't have any congestion at the close of the service. And please join us all for coffee hour and reflect and reminisce and uh, visit a little with us as we close our service and have that time afterwards. I'll now invite Ken and Mark forward to come and bless us and offer the closing blessing. Ken and Mark. And now may the God of hope always fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of his life-giving spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you, those you love, those you serve, and those you pray for. This day, throughout this anniversary year, and always. My friends, our final hymn with the choir in residence will be Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Let's belt it out, choir, and enjoy this wonderful break that you have for the summer, and we thank you for your ministry. My friends, our closing hymn is 393, but Sharon has a presentation for Mark, and it's right here behind my chair. So she forgot to get it out. That's why I forgot about it. So Sharon, step forward and remind me of what I forgot. It's like this at home, right, Pam? Again, it is my privilege on behalf of all of you uh, to thank Ken, Mark, and Beth for coming here today to help us celebrate our 150th year of ministry in Richmond Hill. Now, Mark, you mentioned that it hardly seems nine years since you left. I'm going to say, standing right here now, I feel like time has stood still because in 2008 you appointed me your rector's warden and look <laughs> i am still warden <laughs> thank you mark and for recalling for us the names of all of those who have worshiped and have led worship here and those were just those in the last 20 years it reminds us then that uh, they are part of our story and all of the programs that we have done in the past are part of the story. But they help us also, as you, Mark, said, to look forward with hope to the future with God's help. So, Mark and Beth, on behalf of all of us, please accept this little token of appreciation for your presence with us today. Let's say.
Lord. 